What's going on guys? John Alder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, I'm going to show you three ways to add columns to your data frames with pandas. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, I'm going to show you three ways to add columns to your data frames with pandas. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off memberships on my courses, videos, and books for one time fee, which is insanely cheap. All right, I had an awesome time this weekend racing my very first triathlon at the Las Vegas Triathlon. Did my very first sprint triathlon, got 10th place in my division, I think. Pretty good for my absolute first time, but it was a lot of fun and uh, it was pretty cool. Like I said, in this video, I'm going to show you three ways to add columns to your data. So, in the last video, we talked about counting data in our columns. In this video, we're going to add new columns. So, lots of reasons why you might want to add new columns to your data frame. Maybe you want to add a couple of these columns together and put the sum or whatever, the total in a third column, or maybe you just have some more data you want to add later on and you want to add a new column. I'm going to show you three ways to do it in this video and several ways within those three ways to do uh, certain things that you're going to need to know about. So I've got our dog data we've been working with. I'm calling this dog data underscore short, and I just shortened this down to five records just so it's easier to sort of deal with. You could find this data set on my GitHub page. And as always, you can find a code to this video in the pinned comment section below, as well as link to the playlist with all the other Panda videos in the series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to add a column just using a regular old Python list. And this is definitely the easiest way, especially if your data set is small. And I'll talk about that in just a second. So let's create a column called gender. And for now, this is just going to be a Python list, like I said. And so the first one we'll say is male and then female, and then maybe another male, and maybe another male after that, and then finally another female. So you'll notice this is one, two, three, four, five items, and we have one, two, three, four, five rows. That's sort of important, right? So now we could just call our data frame, my underscore DF, and we could say, hey, let's create a column called gender, and let's assign that list to that column. So now, all we have to do is run our data frame again, and we can see sure enough, right on the end here, it just slaps in this new column called gender. Now, this is great if your data set is small, but a lot of times it's not. So if we took off one of these values and tried to run it again, we're going to get an error. Because like I said, these have to match the number of rows. And that's fine if you have a small data set, right? But you're never going to have a small data set. We both know that, right? So what do you do? Well, we can add default values as well if we don't know the number or if there's just a ton of them and we don't want to type them out by hand. So let's create a column and I'm just going to call this alive slash dead. Are the pets alive or are they dead? That's kind of horrible. But anyway, uh, you know, these are all going to be alive dogs, right? So we're going to add the value true. This is going to be a Boolean. Now we need to then multiply that true by the length of our my underscore DF, right? So that will just take the length of the whole data frame and for each row, add true. So again, we can now my underscore df to see if that worked. And we can see alive, dead, they're all true. Now I used a Boolean here. You could use anything. You could use, you know, the value of Bob, which is a string. And now this all becomes Bob, right? You could use um, a number, whatever, 41. Now it's all 41. I'm going to stick with a Boolean. True. They are all true. So that's cool. What if you want null values in there? So sometimes you might not know the value, but you still want to have the column existed. Maybe you're going to use it for something else later on. How do you add null values in here? Well, we can do that. Let's just come down here and let's go my underscore DF again. Let's add a column called uh, show dog. Are these show dogs, right? Do they compete? Well, we don't know yet, right? Because they've just been born. They've just been adopted. They're very young. We don't know if they're show, do show dogs or not. So we want this to be... Uh, a null value. Well, we can use a function in NumPy called NAN, short for not a number, I think. It's basically a null value. And remember, we have MP because up here we imported NumPy as MP, so we can use NumPy in all its glory that way. Now, again, we're going to want to multiply by the length of our data frame, so each of these gets added to each row. So we run this again. We see is it a show dog? We see NAN, null value. We don't know. And that's cool. So uh, that's how to use lists in a couple of different ways. That's our first method of adding a column. The second method is the insert function. Now this might be a little more useful because when we're adding a list, you'll notice all of these got just added to the end of our data frame. 
And that's cool most of the time, but you might want to add a column somewhere else specifically, like for instance, between the breed and the color column right here. How do you do that? Well, we can use the insert function. We just call my underscore df dot insert. And now we pass several arguments. The first one is what position. So I want to put this in the one -th position. Remember these columns start at zero. So breed is zero, color is one. If we want to put it right in the middle, this would be the one -th column right after breed. So there that is. Next, you put what the header is going to be, right? So let's say were these adopted or not? This will be the column header, right? And now the value. So uh, it's true, they were all adopted. That's why they're in this list, right? So again, we could call uh, this by multiplying the length of my underscore df, nice and easy. Finally, there's a default value of true, which means will we allow duplicates, true or false? So you could leave this off if you want, or you could do true, it's true by default, or if you wanna say false, don't allow duplicates, but these are all gonna be true, so that's kind of duplicate, so, all right? We're just gonna add it like that. So that's it. So now we can run this guy again, and we see sure enough, right here after breed, we have a new column called adopted, and all of these are true. If we ran false by this guy, we get an error because, hey, <laughs> these are all true, so they're gonna be duplicates, right? So keep that in mind. So, okay, very cool. So we're adding all kinds of columns. Oh, we've added two columns here, <laughs> whoops. In the next video, I'll show you how to remove columns. <laughs> but in the meantime, we'll just leave it like that. So the third and final method I'm gonna show you of adding columns, there are other methods as well, but we're only gonna look at three in this video. The most common, I would say, is the assign function. And this will create a whole new data frame. It'll take your old one and then add a new column to it and make a new data frame out of it. And that's very useful a lot of times because many times you wanna keep your original data frame because you're gonna do something else with it, but you want to add a column and then do something different with that new data frame, you're gonna use the dot assign function for that. So here, super easy, we just create a new data frame. I'm gonna call it my df2. Right, and then we set that equal to our original data frame, my df dot assign. And then inside of here, we assign the new column that we want. So let's create a column called horse, right? Are any of these dogs horses? No, I doubt they are. So again, we could say, yeah, no, that's all false. Do our little trick of length of my underscore df, and that should do the trick. And then we can my underscore df2, and we can see, sure enough, we scroll over. <laughs> is it a horse? False, 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 false. These are dogs, they're not horses. And again, this is cool because we can now my underscore df, our original one, and it hasn't actually been changed. See, the last column is show dog on this, not horse, because like I said, the assigned function creates a whole new data frame and assigns a new column to that data frame from the old data frame. So. Very cool and uh, super easy. So there you have three main methods to add columns to your data frame, using a Python list, using the insert function, and using the assign function. Super quick, super easy, and that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 50 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.